This is a 10 Deutschmarks banknote, Germany's currency from 1948, for just over 50 years. But after decades of successful use, Deutschmark banknotes like this one were officially withdrawn across Germany, and on January 1st, 2002, they were completely and totally replaced by Euro banknotes. Or were they? Believe it or not, two decades after they supposedly disappeared, there are a whopping 12.4 billion Deutschmarks still in circulation today. And even more surprising, if you know where to go, there are still hundreds of stores in Germany and one entire town which will still gladly accept Deutschmarks today. And perhaps even more surprising, these places are happy to give these banknotes exactly the same value that they had 20 years ago when they were supposedly discontinued. This is the story of Germany's ghost currency. Hi everyone, Fredo Rockwell here. Just to get you up to speed, here's a quick recap of how the euro was introduced into Germany and across most other European Union states in the late 1990s. On January 1st, 1999, the euro became the official currency of 11 European Union members. From that day, the franc the lira, the peseta, and the Deutschmark, or D-mark as it is more commonly called, still existed, but with a permanent exchange rate. For the D-mark, this was 1.95 to the euro. Remember this, it will be important later. This meant that while people continued to use their old banknotes, in economic terms, each of these old currencies were really just different versions of the new currency, the euro. So for its first three years, the euro existed only in non-physical form. It appeared in bank statements, credit card bills, and that sort of thing. But if you went into a shop, you would still see everything priced in that country's national currency, just as before. And for those three years, each country's original banknotes and coins were used, just as they always had been. Then, on January 1st, 2002, euro banknotes and coins were finally introduced. From that day onwards, when you bought something with DMARC banknotes or coins, shops would only give you change in Euro banknotes and coins, using the previously set exchange rate, of course. Banks and ATM machines also began only giving out Euros, and within a few weeks, almost all of the francs, guilders, pesetas, liras, and DMARCs had been replaced. These banknotes were officially withdrawn, as in they were no longer legal tender, on the 28th of February, 2002 just two months after physical euro money had been introduced. So you might wonder, what happened if a French person found a 500 franc banknote in an old jacket, or if an Italian person found a few thousand lira down the sofa? Were they out of luck? No, at least not for a while. Each euro member's national central bank set up a policy which allowed members of the public to redeem their old money. This usually involved reporting to a bureau of the central bank, and there was usually a strict time limit. For most countries, it was 10 years or so, which is pretty generous, I think. But three things made the situation in Germany different. Very different. The first is that Germany, along with Ireland and Austria, had set no deadline for redeeming old banknotes and coins into euros. So anyone living in these three countries can, even today, walk into an appointed government office with their pounds, shillings, and demarks and swap them over for euros. No questions asked. But unlike the wonderful people of Ireland or Austria, the German people absolutely love cash. As in the actual banknotes, not just money in general. There's even a common German expression, only cash is true. This love for cash is rooted in historic and cultural reasons I won't go into now, but even today, German people carry a much higher amount of cash around with them than people in most other countries. According to a 2017 report, the average German has 107 euros in their wallet, while French people only carry an average of 32 euros. Americans are no more cash dependent than the French. Half of them carry no more than a measly 20 bucks on them at a time. But Germans do not just carry loads of cash around in their wallets. They also have a tendency to hoard it. According to one government report, an estimated 20% of all German printed euro notes end up stuffed under mattresses or wherever else people might want to hide them. 
And despite the rest of the world going digital at a rapid pace, it remains extremely common in Germany today to see cash-only signs in shops and restaurants. Partly because of this increased local demand for cash, Germany has printed more euro banknotes than the rest of the eurozone countries combined, nearly 700 billion euros worth so far. So as you might expect, there were a lot of DMARC banknotes and coins in circulation in 2002 when euro money was introduced. 163 billion DMARCs worth of them to be precise. Put this all together, lots of cash, a national tendency to hoard money, and no timeline for redeeming old coins and banknotes, and you have a recipe for DMARCs sticking around for a lot longer than any other currency in any other Eurozone country. And this phenomenon is not just down to a small minority of DMARC hoarders. According to a 2015 YouGov poll, 54% of all Germans surveyed admitted that they still have some DMARCs at home. So, is the DMARC today some sort of parallel currency being used to fund an underground economy in opposition to the EU-imposed euro? That's a theory which Russia today tried to promote in this 2012 story, as if Germans were hanging on to their DMARC banknotes just in case the euro collapsed. I, I guess it's plausible that some people might be doing this, but the facts don't really back up what Russia today said. Gosh, that must be a first. In reality, the 35 branch offices of Germany's central bank, the Bundesbank, receive old DMARC banknotes and coins for conversion into euros every day. The pace of this conversion has slowed down recently during the pandemic, as these branches currently have shorter opening hours than normal, but even with the pandemic, it hasn't stopped altogether. I emailed the Bundesbank to confirm that the conversion of old DMARCs was still going strong, and they emailed me back to confirm it definitely was. They even have a log of daily total outstanding DMARCs they sent me. There'll be a link to it pinned in the comment where I list my sources. The email also stressed that the opportunity to exchange DMARCs for euros was indefinite, the conversion was free of charge, and that the exchange rate used was the same as it had always been, 1.95 to the euro. And you know what? I believe them. And so does everyone else. The Bundesbank actually has a pretty spotless reputation for this sort of thing. Not only can you redeem 90s era DMARC banknotes, but the Bundesbank will accept any DMARC banknote issued at any time from 1948, the year the DMARC was first introduced, and will even accept notes which are heavily soiled, torn, or in multiple pieces, as long as at least half of the banknote is accounted for. If you have pre-1948 banknotes like this 1 million mark specimen I have from Germany's hyperinflationary crisis in the early 1920s, you're out of luck, which is a shame. But the main message is, if you have a bunch of 1948 onwards banknotes hanging around, there is no rush to exchange them. And everyone knows this. Now, this is where things get interesting. Even though the DMARC is no longer legal tender, which means it's not legally recognized as a way to settle debts or make payments, DMARC banknotes and coins still retain several features which cause them to behave like real money. There are billions of them in circulation. They are backed by something because they can be redeemed by anyone for euros at any time. And their value is consistent since when they are redeemed, the exchange rate has always been and will always be 1.95 DMARCs per euro. So given all this, it's perhaps not that surprising that lots of stores are happy to still accept payments in DMARCs. Perhaps the most famous of these is the fashion clothing chain CNA. Between 2002 and 2016, CNA accepted DMARC payments worth over 52 million euros. And in 2014, this amounted to over 100,000 euros worth of DMARCs per month. Spending DMARCs in a CNA is easy. They are valued at 1.95 to the euro, just like they are at the Bundesbank. And CNA has even set up its tills to make purchases with the old currency straightforward and painless. In 2016, the major German supermarket chain Kaufland decided to get into the act too. Using the slogan, pay almost, like back then, shoppers at Kaufland's 650 locations were offered cases of Beck's beer, advertised at 19 marks and 56 pfennig each. And it's not only major chains which still accept DMARCs. You have to know where to go, but there are still plenty of small independent retailers who are happy to take the old currency at any time. 
For example, you can spend D-marks at this convenience store in Bremen, this toy store in Huxwagen, and this furniture and household goods in Landshut, which I'm mispronouncing all terribly. I'm really sorry. Payphones have also been a good option for spending D-mark coins. This is because, initially, Deutsche Telekom did not fully update them following the introduction of the euro. From 2002 until 2005, a one D-mark coin, worth just under half a euro, would get you a full euro's worth of credit. But when Deutsche Telekom finally updated their payphones, they announced that D-mark coins would continue to work in them indefinitely, just now at the correct rate. In the past 16 years, payphones have become much more obsolete than the D-mark, of course, so it was difficult for me to find out if this policy is still in effect. But according to one source I found, there is still at least one payphone on the market square in Bremen, which still accepts D-mark coins. The historic Berlin department store, known as Herti, which now only exists as an online retailer, goes a step further. Customers are encouraged to post old D-mark banknotes to their office to exchange for online credit. And if you do, Herti will give you an exchange rate of 1.78 D-marks to the euro. So 100 D-marks equals 56 euros instead of just 51. Sweet. But perhaps the most ambitious example of the ongoing D-mark economy is the town of Guyberg in Baden-Württemberg, where during the month of May each year, every store in town, or at least participating stores, which I suspect is most of them, gladly accepts payments in D-marks. I'm not sure Guyberg's annual D-mark month has taken place during the pandemic. It sort of seems unlikely. But as late as 2019, one local bakery reported receiving over 600 D-marks that year. So now you must be wondering, Fredo, it sounds like there actually is a parallel D-mark economy after all. But no. It might sound like this, but this is not a parallel economy. And despite its unexpected longevity, the D-mark is slowly but steadily disappearing. You see, if you do spend a 100 D-mark note in a branch of CNA or Coughlin or in the local bakery in Guyberg, you will receive your change in euros. And after landing in the tills of these stores, this money is removed from circulation, as each of these D-mark notes and coins is quickly redeemed at a Bundesbank branch for euros. So with every D-mark purchase, the number of D-marks left in circulation gets smaller. Currently, of the 12 billion D-marks still in the wild, over half are now thought to be in coins. And according to the shopkeepers in Guyberg, fewer D-marks are spent in the town each year, and the D-marks that are spent are increasingly small coins or very old banknotes. So it looks unlikely that the D-mark will continue as some sort of ghost currency in the German economy. That is, of course, unless you choose to believe the conspiracy theories. Some say that the Bundesbank is keeping these returned D-marks in secret underground vaults, just in case the euro does someday fail. Like most conspiracy theories, this one doesn't stand up to close scrutiny, but it is based on something true. During the 1950s and 60s, the German government did print up special secret versions of the D-mark, which it did keep in underground vaults. These banknotes were kept in reserve in case the Soviet Union or its satellites ever tried to ruin the West German economy by flooding the country with counterfeit money. But this story will have to wait for another Strange Money video. So if it sounds interesting, go ahead and slap the subscribe button so you don't miss it. And in case you're wondering what the Bundesbank does do with the return D-Mark banknotes, I'll tell you, they shred them. And if you're interested, you can buy D-Mark confetti in blocks on eBay. Thanks for watching. Did you know about Germany's ghost currency before watching this? And has there ever been anything similar in your country? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please go ahead and hit the like button so more people will have a chance to see it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.